Thank you, ma'am. Why punishment is not allowed? We have grown up believing punishment is the way of development. But if you look at the Vedantic way and the IB way, we talk about reflection. We talk about after the reflection, proceeding, thereafter, what's the next step? So, you have to, as a coordinator, as a facilitator, as a guide, ask yourself, where does the child stand today? Where did the child begin? Yesterday, yesterday, or five years ago, where has she, he come today? And you have to ask yourself, where do I wish to take this child across? It is not, he's with me only for this year. No, he's with you and me together in this school. Same question, for a deeper understanding, you have to ask yourself, you know, we hear this question, who am I? You've heard this statement many a time in almost all spiritual texts. There is a word in Sufi Islam. The word is zikr. It means remembrance. You have to remember what who am I can be answered from the text. You hear in every other Vedanta says you're the Brahma. You're the God's child. Jesus is saying the same. That is one. But it's an academic knowledge. Are we understanding it? Are we realizing it? Am I saying yes? I feel I'm traveling towards the right direction. I'm becoming, I'm, I've done at least one tiny centimeter of the journey. The moment you do that, you feel something called a sense of well-being. A peace of God's peace dawns upon you. Problems go away from you. So you know, I'm right. I'm on the correct track. So you need to ask this question to yourself and for the child too. Where am I? Where is he? Where is she? Where am I? Now, where am I? It's a very powerful question to take you across from who am I to where am I going to be? Where should I go? I am certain almost none of us ask this question <laughs> that have you reflected ever honestly don't have to say anything just talk to yourself where were you 10 years ago have you reflected on it and where are you today where do I want to be 10 years from tomorrow now why is this important for you and I as a human being? See, animals don't ask this question. Now do the babies do? But the grown-up adults with an adult mind, they ask. And those awakened babies also do. So you know, two-year, four-year, five-year, Gyaneshwar, Shakuntala Devi, Dhrup Tara, Pole Star, they had all done it as per our knowledge, wisdom, stories, mythological experiences. What happens? What is it? Let's look at the evolution. You've heard about, we all studied about Darwinian theory. That we all, you and I, we all progress from being an ape to being a human being. Let us not question that but let's just build on that, though it is not at all in agreement in mo many religions. That's a Western theory. But there is a question to the Western scientist goes on, to the anthropologist, to the paleodoctomist, you know, who go ahead and study various structures. They're asked this question, if the monkeys, apes became human beings, then the question is very interesting. Why didn't all the apes and monkeys become human beings? So this is the theory of evolution. 
So Sam answered that question very nicely, and I'm touching upon that point today, not taking it to any conflict of that is right, this is wrong, but build it up from there into one thing. How did, so obviously some apes have become human beings like you and I, and some apes haven't, who you can see today. How? So some scientists answer this beautifully. They say the evolution believes in that you were not happy being what you were, so you change yourself. Like, you know about the amphibians, how did they came out from the water, and the birds, how they learned to fly. You heard about that story. So similarly, some of the apes were not happy being apes. Can you and I, if we're just happy who we are, so we stay as a frog in the well. And this is the message of the great master. Stop being happy who you are. But travel, take the journey. And proceed from very, very you are. Ten years ago, you were something, you have traveled. You are today, you got some degrees, qualifications. Is it all? Where do I want to be 10 years from today? You have to start working at it. And same is with the child. Why not punishment? Because punishment dwarfs them. Punishment kills their instinct to want to change. Punishment makes them two to the four, A for apple, Baba black sheep. Have you noticed it is still going on in all the so-called kindergarten schools, twinkle, twinkle, little star. No? So, changing. What do we do then? What should we do? This is what you need to reflect upon, employ it to the children. If you take a race sauce, an Arabian race sauce, powerful, very expensive, but you beat that horse every time, to make it do, initially it will rebel, it will do something, or take a tiger. You keep that electric whip and keep whipping it, it will do ha, ha, something like that, but eventually it will bow his head down. So what will happen? You said, now he's obedient, but what have you done? You've broken that. It's not a lion anymore. It's not a tiger anymore. It is not. What did you do? You made it a pet dog. What do the pet dog sit, meaning it will sit. You beat him up because he's done potty or something or eaten up your food. The dog sits like that. The moment you get up, he'll still get up. As you walk, he'll walk behind you. Is that what we want from our children? The Swami Vivekananda says, that system, that system, which is the traditional school system, which aims at educating our boys in the same manner as that of the man who battered his ass a donkey, being advised it would thereby be turned into a race horse, should be abolished and thrown away. That's why no punishment. Thank you, ma'am. But what do you do? Give him an ambience, environment. What is chill out? It's not a punishment. It's reflection. Make him sit quietly. And after that, don't start giving him a big lecture. That's also punishment. That's gyanam. Nobody wants to hear. Do you like to hear somebody telling you all the time what's wrong with you? No, you like to hear what's good with you. Even when he isn't chill out, you tell him, you're not a monkey. Why are you behaving like a monkey? Are you a dog? He'll say, no. Why are you then fighting like a dog? And plant the seed, forget about it. Watch him carefully. Keep watching, keep monitoring, change their will, because they're human beings. Change you and I will. To make it better, what should you do? First is three principles. Number one is inspiration or motivation. Inspire them. You become a teacher, why? Because you thought it's a good thing. You were inspired to become a teacher or whatever. Now, you have the inspiration. You get divine inspirations when you do the right thing. 
from cosmic energy comes into you. You find divine hands, divine people will come and help you. After inspiration is what you and I are doing called education, schooling. Inspiration, education. Education, let's say you want to become a spiritual master. You're inspired to become one with God, but you have to educate, you have to study, you have to reflect, you have to meditate. Isn't it? So what we're doing in the school, we are educating, we're schooling. Schooling is what? Discovering that true potential which is inside every child. Every one of you and me. Discover that and let them know <laughs> that you are that. This is why that very famous statement. If you don't take care of your husband, somebody else will. What does that mean? Somebody else recognizes what's good in him. You and I are not doing it. So what will happen to that boy? He'll find another teacher. And you and I know all of us in our life found somebody who likes us. No? And the third is practice. Inspiration, education, practice. This is Vedanta. I'm giving you from Vedanta. In this practice, if you learn how to drive, but if you don't drive, something happens. Look carefully. Your car is not being driven because you're not driving it. Not only you will forget driving, your car will also deteriorate, rust, and go to docks. No? Imagine a car is just standing. Tires will deflate. Engine will rust up. Same thing will happen to you and I. And now, if you practice, you become a better driver and a good driver. Same thing is with sitar or writing. That's how we tell you, even if they've written two lines of a poem or a story or a picture, appreciate them, motivate them. They will practice more. So I notice, I think her name is Tanvi Bora, no? Huh? Arya Bora. Arya Bora one day wrote something and we took her photograph and put it up into the thing. She's writing every day now. Three, four pages. Morning she writes something, gives it. Afternoon she writes another thing. Evening she writes another thing. Now that's somebody in the budding. Keep doing that for everyone. And everybody has that power. You and I too. So remember, every sinner has a future. If I want to learn sitar because it's a nice idea, but I have to educate myself, I have to practice it. Same thing is with your human life. What is spirituality? What is religion? Religion is to give you the joy of being who you are today, being happy, being blissful. Being thankful to the Supreme that I'm alive, I'm good, I'm grateful to you. So if you look at the great masters, let's say Krishna. Three simple examples. Number one, notice from childhood onwards he was being attacked by Kungs to kill because he heard that famous statement that your sister's son is going to kill you. But he was never sad. He was always mischievous. He was called Nadghat Gopal. He was always pulling people through his jokes and pranks. No? Always in joy, in ananda. You always see Krishna smiling, Krishna playing something, Krishna dancing. That is one. Two, notice he's calm. Even in the battlefield of Kurukshetra, he's calm. He's talking about Vedanta in Kurukshetra battle. Everybody else, including the horses, are reining to go. But he's saying, no, wait. Duryodhan and all that from the other side saying, what's wrong with him? What is he talking to Arjuna? He must have seen it, read it. And the third, he's talking about you be calm, 
you be joyful and be who you are you are connected look at him the lessons always got a smile always joyful and you are spiritually connected be who you are so this is called zikr remembering who you are and that remembrance with which you have a beautiful day there's a lots of things to be done and get it checked out by somebody else it is true whatever you have written check it again and again and again and again and you will find something else will come up correct it yes you have to make that effort that's called the practice if you don't make the effort it stays substandard but you have a power to make it even better can we all do that let's have a nice day thank you very much smile